Merlin, Gandalf, Dumbledore, my 8th level mage Mezbul the Grey, scourge of my public library Dungeons and Dragons Club. These be powerful wizards all, able to cast lightning from their oaken staves and cause the earth to tremble, but each has a conspicuous flaw. None really exists. Huzzah! Enter Oberon Zell Ravenheart, a real-life wizard I discovered in my nighttime meanderings on internet at OberonZell.com. We will go behind his website, venturing to meet this fearsome sorcerer in person in this edition of Web Drifter. Pleasure to meet you. This is where we hang out, and uh, you know we got our dragons and stuff in here. Yeah, so. wow, you sure do. And uh, you know, watch movies and and visit and hang out. And what stuff. kind of movies do wizards usually watch? Well, there's lots of magical movies. <laughs> we, <laughs> we tend to prefer fantasy and science fiction. I mean, things like Lord of the Rings, you know, and Narnia and uh, Aragon and oh, there's countless ones. Harry right? Potter. Of course, you gotta love that. You know, I, I have to say though, I notice even for a powerful wizard. Even you can't figure out a way to not have four or five remotes. Oh, it's very annoying. But actually, <laughs> we, we have. We just we just managed to get everything programmed into this one. So now, from now on out, this should work for everything. And was that was some sort of a spell that you learned from the ancients, or? No, that was somebody else who was more of a tech wizard than me coming in and the, the grimoire of the of the instruction manual. Right. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about all these dragons and and other stuffed creatures that you have in here. <laughs> well. You know, magical creatures are really part of the wizardry universe, and dragons and unicorns and many other creatures. In fact, for a number of years, what we did was we raised unicorns, so that was a huge... Get out of here. Of life. No, absolutely true. What do you mean you raised unicorns? Well, Morning Glory and I discovered the secret That's like of the saying unicorn. that I, I raised wyverns. Yeah, I know. It's like that. It's been like that. It's It was the most amazing part of our life. Like, like you raised unicorns like in a fantasy Dungeons and Dragons sense? No, or like no in reality. In how reality. do you do that? Unicorns don't exist. Well, they did after we discovered the secret. We didn't what was think the so secret? Either. A lot of blotter acid? No. <laughs> the secret is that there was an art form that was known in ancient times and kept a closely guarded secret for causing the horns of horned animals to grow as a single united horn instead of as two separate horns. Wow. And, and it was, it's an art form, like bonsai, you know? So what happened to the unicorns? Are there any still alive, like scamping no, around? No, the, the very last one died about two years ago. He oh. was 17 years old and he lived at a magical retreat center up in Geyserville called Isis Oasis. Because we didn't have any facilities to keep them anymore after that time. And for 10 years, that's all we did. You know? well, what do you do with the body? Make like unicorn jerky? No, but we do have uh, we do have a skull of one of them somewhere really? around. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. you gotta show that yeah. to me. Well, I got a picture. I'll have to show you. Okay. I can give you a picture. Is it true that unicorns only eat rainbow candy, like Jolly Ranchers and Skittles? Okay. Well, let's uh, okay. let's let's go check out some of the rest of the place. Okay. This is the library. Do you believe in God? I believe in lots of gods, you know. Yeah? Why should any of them be left Which out? Which is your favorite? Ah, boy, that's a tough one. I think Gaia, Mother Earth, Gaia? is the one that I would say. Who would win in a much. fight, Gaia or Jesus Christ? Well, Gaia is a whole living planet. I think she's a lot bigger, you know? And I don't think either of them Whoa. are fighting. Someone's going to hell. So you're a gray wizard, right? That's right, I am. Do you know any black wizards? Um, yes, I do. You mean like black racial black or oh yeah both both, both. i mean but racially black yes of course um wizardry is universal i've had students who are like muslim and say well can you be a muslim and still be a wizard and i say well alchemists the original alchemy all came from arabia you know people say well can you be jewish and be a wizard i said solomon is regarded as one of the greatest wizards of all time sure that's a good idea to be teaching the muslims wizardry what we need is because it's the one job thing to bring like to you know be, a yes. match and make a shoe bomb on a plane it's another thing to be able to like cast a fireball on a plane well, this is really neat, but I want to see the rest of the house. 
All right, well, for that, I'll introduce you to Morning Glory, my beloved wife here, so she can take you on the rest of the tour. Morning Glory! I'm really glad to finally see you. <laughs> I've heard all about you. <laughs> well, most people have. I'm very famous, especially online. I don't know if you've been following my career and my message board postings and all my fan clubs and reading my blog and so on and so <laughs> forth. But yes, I am uh, quite a big shot. So let's all go right, you know, well, with the rest of the house. Come along and I'll introduce you to the lair of the witch and the wizard. This is the fairy glen. This is... Uh, there are lots and lots and lots of little fairies. Smoke a lot of grass. I did my share yeah. of the good, good, the good stuff. stuff. You ever smoke DMT? Yes. <laughs> that's the fairies. Yeah, that's when you see <laughs> the fairies, the am I right? And they talk to you. Yes, yes they do. They do. They the elves do. and the fairies. They certainly do. Help me. Well, <laughs> we should probably head back inside and make sure that Oberon isn't spiking our drinks with something, you know? Well, you can never tell. Mm -hmm. After all, Oberon is the, the king of the magic fairy realm. That's, that's who he got named after. That's precisely what I'm worried about, sister. <laughs> so here we are in your study. All right. And I see that you study primarily Star Trek, Star Wars. <laughs> Well, pretty much everything. I mean, this whole shelf is dinosaurs, you know, and shelf above that is magical stuff and Terry Pratchett and astronomy and cosmology is down here. And um, really, there's not a lot of fields that I don't study, yeah. you know. So, Oberon, you are a great and powerful wizard. So what I'd like to do is test your wizard prowess by giving you three situations, and I'd like to know how you would react in those situations. All right. Let's say you go to the bank and a masked gunman storms into the bank and says, everybody down! What do you do? Well, I would probably um, not go down. Um, I would probably uh, affix him with a, with a stare and stop him in his tracks with the, with the whole presence and then you use, use the voice. Jeez, you know? they gotta send you over to Iraq. I don't want to be over in Iraq. No, I but do they not want to be there. Kind of I think those people are all crazy. All right, here's another situation. Mm -hmm. You're out on a hike and you lose the trail. Mm -hmm. Night is falling. Mm -hmm. There's a storm coming. Mm -hmm. Hypothermia is a very real possibility. What do you do? Oh, well, I'd probably create a shelter immediately and create fire to keep myself warm, which I can do pretty easily. Can't you just teleport home? No, I can't teleport home. But uh, if these days, I probably wouldn't go anywhere without my cell phone, which is, makes it really easy. <laughs> but I can tell the directions from the stars. Uh, of course, if there's a storm coming, you don't get much stars. I can make shelter. I've, I've, uh, I know woodcraft, you know? Mm -hmm. Last situation, you're at a children's birthday party, and the mm -hmm. pony mm -hmm. that they've hired to entertain the children is old and sick and breaks its front leg. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Oh, well, I would, I would immediately deal with, with setting that leg and healing it and wrapping it and doing first aid just like I would if it was a person who had an injury and broke their leg you know exactly and I would get everybody else involved in uh, in working to help provide a healing energy and to calm the horse down and and you know and sing and chant and stroke and do all the stuff that can create a nice healing field of energy for it healing is one of the practices and one of the departments that I know well I you've passed my test you are in fact a very powerful wizard and therefore I'd like you to help me. All right, what kind of help do you need? I am terribly lonely. Hmm. I'm not having any luck with the ladies. Perhaps you could cast some sort of a love spell upon me to make me irresistible to women? Well, I think we can do something with that. You were talking earlier about the D&D charisma factor thing, you know, and... Is it because I play so much D&D, maybe that's why the women don't like me? Well, it might be. You have to decide whether you want to have real women in your life or you want to just have D&D uh, characters, you know, in your life. You know, sometimes you need to move out of your mother's basement and uh, get a life, you know? So there's that part of it, you know? <laughs> so says the wizard. <laughs> right? That's right. I have a life, you know? <laughs> it's a pretty good one. So All we'll right. see what we can do for you. All right, bucko. Teach me. All right. Teach we'll do me. That. We'll do that. Okay, let's go in the other room then. All right. It is now my great pleasure to have a wizard and a witch cast a spell upon me that will make me irresistible to the ladies. <laughs> this isn't funny, Morning Glory. This is serious business. Let's do it. We 
give you this juicy loving cup. Mm -hmm. Drink it down. Drink it down. The potion, the sweetness. Did you guys wash those wands in the dishwasher with Cascade? Before? Absolutely. The cold thing? Yes. The yep. Thing. This is thing. like cooking wine, dude. It's yeah. potion. It's Marsala. It's Marsala. It's, this is what you cook. <laughs> like chicken and this is not drinking wine. <laughs> there you go. Oh, See man. now you used your will to overcome. It's gonna make me leave a potion in your bathroom. <laughs> what it's gonna do. Quivering leaves pour down deep sleep. Anoint yourself with this in several places. I think you can figure that out. Well, you don't want to put it on your dick. Because that might hurt. It's got little glitter bits in it. Mode it be. Mode it be. Faux oh, shizzle, oh, my wizard. There you go. Shazam. Shazam. Thank you. I'm going to go out into the world. That's right. And I'm going to get my dick wet. Well, my dancing around in a slummy bar wearing a wizard hat did get me attention from the ladies. But sadly, they were all batshit crazy and somewhat dangerous. One of them even had an open sore on her mouth that was irritated by my glitter potion. And maybe that's the lesson. Act crazy and you'll attract crazy. But be yourself and one day you'll find someone perfect for you. The real you. Just like Oberon and Morning Glory had. Think they needed a love spell to know they were meant for each other? No way. And one of these days, I'll find someone too. Somewhere out there on that twisty, turny Web Drifting Road. Hey Web Drifters, if you like this show, you'll love Geek Entertainment TV, starring Irina Slutsky. Take a look. Warning, here are a few good reasons why geeks should never leave the house. as Ruby. <laughs> you kind of have carpal tunnel syndrome and all that. And just, Typing on the computer. And a mallet. This is the Chakra Tron. Kid, I heard a rumor. I heard that you're gay. A few good reasons why geeks shouldn't play video games. But the man cannon. Tell me about the man cannon. The man cannon? <laughs> Did you make this button? A few good reasons why geeks shouldn't go to conferences. How medically safe is a dirty Sanchez? I wouldn't advise it. So have you ever made out with Richard Stallman? Yeah. Oh wait, Twitter Dildonics. What's your safety word? <laughs> Linux, I hardly ever say it. How big is your stack? This big. A few reasons why geeks shouldn't wait in line. <laughs> How much did you pay for that? 500 plus tax. Let me see the receipt. Huh? My friend got it. Why are you wearing such an evil shirt? Because I'm evil. And you made my boobs famous. Geek Entertainment TV cannot be held liable for adverse reactions as a result of watching the show. Itching, scratching, redness, rashes, swelling, and a new third nipple. Don't blame us. Geekentertainment.tv